you're not using artificial intelligence. Today, I want to clarify something that affects every business professional, every designer using modern tools. Now in this video, I'm gonna show you why most of what we call AI isn't artificial at all, and why understanding the difference will elevate your work. Now we use the term AI far too casually. Now, it's used in marketing, in product features, in everyday conversations, and it creates the illusion that all these tools are, well, just magically smart. But as someone who leads UX for a global brand, I need to say something very clearly to all of you. Most teams are not using artificial intelligence, not even close. They're using automation or assisted intelligence at best. Let me prove it to you. When we confuse those categories, it leads to real costly mistakes. Not because the tools are bad, no, that's not what we're saying here, but it's because we misjudge what they can and cannot do. Now, before we get into the definitions and really break it down with what that means for us, right? Let me start with a real example. This is really gonna frame everything that follows. In 2025, Deloitte delivered a government welfare compliance report worth around 440,000 Australian dollars, or basically around half a million Australian dollars. But soon after, reviews found major issues, fabricated citations, and non-existent academic papers, and even a quote that incorrectly attributed something to a high court judgment. Now, Deloitte later confirmed that parts of the report were generated using, well, you guessed it, ChatGPT4 through Microsoft Azure, but those sections that were held in question were not adequately verified. That's what Deloitte also confirmed. Now they had to withdraw the document, they had to correct it, they had to repay a portion of the contract fee. So ultimately Deloitte lost out on three fronts. One, they had to repay back some of the money they charged in the first place. Two, they had to redo and update the work and add human efforts to that. And that was at their own cost. And then three, also their reputation was sullied, even more so because this was the second time that this was reported in the media. Now, this is what happens when generative AI is treated as autonomous instead of as a prediction system that requires human oversight. We're not there yet. We're not in the era of Terminator Salvation or any other sci-fi movie that has what may be called or what may seem as sentient beings that are machines. You see, this is what happens when generative AI is treated as autonomous instead of as a prediction system that requires human oversight, basically. It doesn't understand accuracy. This is Gen AI. It does not understand context. It only predicts the next likely word or pixel. Keep this example in mind, as I said, because this is going to frame the entire discussion and it will help us understand what I'm about to tell you next. Now the breakdown. Automated intelligence is a digital intern. Yeah, I said it. You see, it performs repetitive structured tasks efficiently and consistently. Yes, it does. It's very good at doing that. For example, batch renaming layers removing backgrounds from images, exporting asset sets. Now this is extremely useful and it's helpful to us as humans, right? This is taking care of tasks that perhaps we just don't want to do. But you see, this is not intelligence. It's speed and consistency though, but nothing more than that. What about assisted intelligence? Now assisted intelligence can elevate our capacity, can give us suggestions, starting points or options. Now I talked about how assisted intelligence can help designers or UX generalists to elevate the skills that they have. Check that out in one of the videos that's in the description. But we've got some examples of what assisted intelligence is. Figma's first draft, writing assistance, recommendation engines, and we've all experienced recommendation engines when we've shopped online or even at Amazon. Product roles that may say you may also like as a heading that precedes them. Prototyping co-pilot. So these are all real world examples. You see, these things, they support your thinking, assisted intelligence, but they do not understand your user. They do not understand your brand, nor your constraints. 
They rely on your judgment, on my judgment, our judgment. We are still the co-pilots of these tools. They rely on the data we input into them as tools. But artificial intelligence, the phrase that we use far too often. You see, what many people call artificial intelligence today is nowhere near the human level reasoning that we think it is. True artificial intelligence would understand objectives, trade-offs, emotions, constraints, and context. What we're trying to say here is that true artificial intelligence is as it is defined. It is sentient. It can create something out of nothing. What we understand as artificial intelligence today, especially in the public domain, cannot do that. You see, today's generative models are extraordinary pattern recognizers. That's what they really are. They can produce something that looks correct, yes, and it can look really nice, but it can lack the underlying logic of real UX. See, this is why AI-generated interfaces, for example, often look really impressive, really clean, but then they fall apart the moment you start to examine the flow or accessibility, or you start to apply some organic level data from users directly onto the design to stress test it and see how it would perform in real world environments of organic thinking. But here's the leadership takeaway. Now we don't want to wait for a mythical form of artificial intelligence to replace us or to rescue us. That's not a strategy. That's not a strategy at all. That's of any good standard. Your opportunity is clear. Use automation to eliminate repetitive tasks. Use assisted intelligence to widen your thinking and accelerate the insight you may have from that thinking. But apply human judgment where empathy, clarity, responsibility, where these things really matter. You see, your value is knowing what to automate, what to assist and what must remain human. Now, if this helped you reframe how you use AI in your design practice, share it with your team. If it left you thinking, then my job is also done. Let's raise the standard of how we work with these tools. Until next time, stay present, stay curious, and I'll see you in the next video.